yodel, yodel. Time to talk about the monk, Xanatha's Guide. Gonna talk about Xanatha's Guide. Um, <clears throat> I have to say that uh, talking about monks has been one of my favourite things to do, and therefore I'm probably going to continue for as long as I possibly can. Uh, this particular monk is the Sun Soul Monk. So if you are re-watching this live stream, you can check out the start time down in the description. Just look at the start time in the description down below. Otherwise, if you're part of the live stream, normally what I do is I present everything first. And once I've presented uh, everything I want to discuss about whatever the topic is, today is the Sun Soul Monk, then I open it up and I'll chat about whatever you like. Um, whether it be the Sun Soul Monk or something else. But I recommend typing into the chat um, before I start signing out. Okay? Alright, just because sometimes the latency takes a little while to kick in. So let's get started and I'll work my way through the Sun Soul Monk. Hi, welcome to How to DD. My name is Fred Wheeler and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons 5e. And we're talking about. Xanatha's Guide to Everything, and this is Xanatha's Guide to the Way of the Sun Soul Monk. Now, I have to say that the Sun Soul Monk I thought was a bit of a, a bit cheesy to start off with, but now that I've looked at it very, very closely, because I've had to, um, I actually like it quite a lot, and I understand what they were trying to duplicate when they created this, which is really awesome. So, you can turn to page 35 of Xanatha's Guide to Everything to see details on the Sun Soul Monk. Don't turn to the Player's Handbook because there's no details in the Player's Handbook on, on the Sun Soul Monk. Just the basic build for, this, for the monk. All the, uh, the basics that you would get. The actual Masonic traditions or for the Way of the Sun, Sun Soul is actually in Xanatha's Guide. So make sure you go there when you're checking things out or you want a resource um, to, uh, to look at. So let's start off with the Sun Soul Monk has mastered their Qi or your Qi. I think it's really when they say Qi but I feel like they're working off the concept of Qi um, their life energy to t transform it into bolts of power and light. Light being one of the main focuses for this monk and Xanatha's Guide to Everything has three particular monks, one being the Drunken Master, which I've already done a video on, and uh, the other one being the Kensai, and then the Sun Soul Monk, which if you see is on the far right. And that particular image of the Sun Soul Monk, I don't really feel like depicts what I thought the Sun Soul Monk would look like. When I think of the Sun Soul Monk, I'm actually thinking of something completely different. So meditation has unlocked the ability for you to unleash energy from your very soul. You reach right down to your ki or chi, whichever thing you want to call it. You draw on that and that's what fuels your ability to do the things that you do. You can draw that energy from your life force and there's no actual penalty to do so. With a lot of things that you might um, notice Usually penalties with any kind of character class in Dungeons and Dragons don't exist. But what I found really interesting about this is there's literally nothing. There's no penalties. And it's actually quite a powerful archetype, which I thought was quite surprising. Um, particularly because it essentially t turned the monk into a close quarter combat um, class and it makes them like a spellcaster to a certain degree. Obviously, not completely, but certainly does feel a lot like that. So, eat your heart out, video gamers who enjoyed things like Street Fighter and Dragon Ball Z and Mortal Kombat, all of those sorts of things. That's really what this particular build is based off, as far as I can tell. Nothing wrong with that. Honestly, I think it's actually a good idea. We have to have it at some point, right? And that's what they've drawn on for this particular um, archetype. So there are quite a few features that you gain access to. What I did notice that is that at third level usually you get two different sort of 
attributes or abilities that you can use straight off the bat when you get to level three. And uh, with the Sun Soul Monk, you don't. And there's a reason for it. And that reason, as far as I can tell, is because the feature that you get at third level for the Sun Soul Monk is so powerful. And that is why you don't get anything like that. So this is Radiant Sunbolt. So Radiant Sunbolt is basically a really concrete monk feature. It's very good. It's really your bread and butter. It's the sort of thing that you are going to blast out. It's your ability to basically throw bolts of light. And we've seen it before in many different sort of uh, uh, stories and so forth, but this is basically the idea behind it. So I'm going to read through it very quickly and then give you sort of my breakdown of it. So starting when you choose this tradition at third level, you can hurl a searing bolt of magical radiance. So we're dealing with radiant damage rather than fire damage. You gain a new attack option that you can use with your attack action. Now the attack action can be quite varied, so that's quite good. That's really useful because then you can now utilize that uh, with your, your basic aspects of any kind of monk. So it all ties in very nicely. This special attack is a ranged spell attack with a range of 30 feet. Now I know that's quite short. You are proficient with it. You can add your dexterity modifier to the attack, which is most monks are going to be built around dexterity. And it's damage rolls. So dexterity modifier for your attack rolls and your damage rolls. Its damage is radiant, not fire. And its damage die is 1d4. But this damage die changes as you gain monk levels, as shown in the martial arts column on the monk table. So that means you're not losing anything out by using this feature. It's staying pace with what you would normally have if you were playing a, a standard monk that wasn't a Sun Soul monk. When you take the attack action on your turn and use this special attack as part of it, you can spend one key point to make the special attack twice as a bonus action. So here's the point. That means that if you want to, you can use your action, blast it out. You can also spend a key point and then use your bonus action, and that's two that you can blast out. But this is what really sort of hits home for me, and that is when you gain the extra attack feature, this special attack can be used for any of the attacks you make as part of the attack action. So that means that if you use your attack action and you've got extra attack, you can fire it out twice, which is very nice, and you can spend a key point if you want to and fire it out a third time using your bonus action. Or you could use your attack action, fire it out twice, then move in and do your martial arts and do a flurry of blows up close. And then of course you're gonna get four attacks. So you, you are, to a, I say a large extent when you get extra attack, you are losing out on one attack that you would normally have by being at range. But there are some benefits to it, and that is you're dealing with radiant damage. Radiant damage is really good because it's one of those things that a lot of things don't have resistances to, or immunities. Surprisingly really important. So you can use this attack action. Basically, it's, it's, it's like being up to a uh, repeat the same attack more than once. So that's more than most wizards can do. It's like throwing or hurling out a cantrip and you can do that up to twice with your attack action, three times if you've got the extra attack feature, three times if you're using your bonus action, and if you don't have extra attack you can throw it out once as an attack action and use your bonus action and throw it out a second time. So most, most spellcasters can't do anything like that. Not with attack spells, anyway. It is, as I said, the bread and butter of the Sun Soul Monk. I think it's fantastic. The fact that it scales with the martial arts um, damage table is even better. The key point use for the bonus action as well is awesome because you can still do it, um, but you don't, you know, if you're not using your bonus action for it, you don't have to use those key points up. So I think it's a really solid choice for anybody who's looking at uh, working with something like that. The next one is Searing Arc Strike. You get that at 6th level. 
And this is basically your ability to pound the enemy and then fry them up close. That's essentially what you're doing. So at sixth level, you gain the ability to channel your ki into searing waves of energy. Immediately after you take the attack action on your turn, you can spend two key points to cast Burning Hand spell as a bonus action. It's pretty cool. You can spend additional key points to cast Burning Hands at higher level, high levels. So essentially it scales as well, which is awesome. Each additional key point you spend increases the spell level by one. The maximum number of key points is two plus any additional points. And that is going to be based off the, the spell, the spell, your monk level halved. So if you're monk level two, then you're only going to be able to pump into it, I believe, just two key points and, and cast it at the, the lowest level. That would be like first level. But if you are monk level four, you can throw it out at second level as, as if you were casting a second level burning hands. And if you are sixth level, then you can do it as if you were um, throwing it out at a third level slot. Really quite cool. Obviously the odd num numbers will round down and so they won't help you in the slightest. So you do have to wait for that. What do I think of Searing Sunburst? Well, to be honest, I, I, I think it's one of those things that will work well in the right situation. Not necessarily every single situation, but in the right situation, it could be extremely useful. You can spend three key points. <clears throat> sorry, you can spend not three key points. Basically, it's the potential to take out a pack of enemies when you're close. It's very resource hungry on key points. The fact that you have to, for a first level slot, pump out a total of two key points to make it work is a bonus action. Oh, it's a bonus action, true, but it's still you're going to be using up a lot of key points with this. That's probably the only huge downside that I see, and the fact that its potential only lies when you have a pack of enemies roughly in front of you rather than completely surrounding you. So in the right situation, it's going to be quite nice. All right, next on our list is Searing Sunburst. Searing Sunburst. Now this you get at 11th level. And the features behind this, this is really the, um, the mini radiant fireball for the monk. The, the Searing Sunburst. I, I honestly, when I think about this, I think, boom. Now your monk can cast fireball. It's a little bit ridiculous, but it's still pretty cool. So let's have a look at it. At 11th level, you gain the ability to create an orb of light that erupts into a devastating explosion. As an action, you can mag magically create an orb and hurl it at a point you choose within 150 feet. Now that's really good, because now you, you've got the kind of range you needed if you wanted to do things at range you can where it erupts into a sphere of radiant light for a brief but deadly instant. Each creature in that 20 foot radius sphere, 20 foot radius, that's a big area, must succeed on a constitution saving throw. Pay attention, this is a constitution saving throw, not a dexterity saving throw. A lot of classes or creatures are going to have a lot of trouble dealing with a constitution saving throw, so very helpful. Now, if they don't succeed, they're going to take 2d6, or two six-sided dice of radiant damage. A creature doesn't need to make the save if the creature is behind total cover that is opaque. So in other words, they have to be behind total cover that isn't transparent, and they can't be able to see through it. So its, it's effect is really based on light, rather than on heat. Um, I think that's essentially what they're going for as if you throwing the heat or uh, the light from your soul at them. You can increase the fear's damage by spending key points. Each point you spend to a maximum of three increases the damage by two six-sided dice. So let's have a look at that. That's, that's pretty um, beefy. 
So what that mean, means is, essentially you get a mini radiant fireball, um, you can spend up to three key points if you want, if you have them available, and you can essentially create your own fireball using radiant damage because you don't have to spend, I believe you don't have to spend any key points initially to actually use this feature at 11th level. So that means you can do it. And if you want to increase the power, um, you spend one key point that'll make it four six-sided dice, spend two key points, it becomes uh, six six-sided dice. And if you spend three key points, it becomes eight six-sided dice. And there you have your fireball. Kaboom, things are gonna get blown up really nicely. Okay, what do I think? This is the wow factor of this, this Sun Soul. It really is. That's the one thing that just stands out to me uh, as being the, the most awesome ability to have. And it's achievable at level 11. Rather than having to wait till 17th or 18th level, you can pick that up at level 11. So pretty awesome if you ask me. The last feature in this particular uh, class is the, the Sun Shield, which you get at 17th level. If you ever play that high, it's possible you may never get that high. Uh, so basically this is a really nice utility function that has a nice utility function with light. So it actually produces light, but also it's an energy shield for the monk. And this is how it works. So at 17th level, you become wraithed in luminescent magical aura. You shield, you shed, sorry, not shield, you shed bright light in a 30 foot radius and dim light for an additional 30 foot. So you're like a great huge glowing torch, really. You can extinguish or restore the light as a bonus action. Pay attention, so you can you can restore it or extinguish it as a bonus action. So it's something you can turn on and off, which I think is really awesome. That's why I mean it's quite a, a cool utility function, particularly if you don't want to have somebody casting the light cantrip. Or having to walk around with a torch. That might be a drag if you are one of the few races that don't have dark vision. If a creature hits you with a melee attack while this light is shining, you can use your reaction, not your action or bonus action, but your reaction to deal radiant damage to the creature. The radiant damage is equal to 5 plus your wisdom modifier. So you need to make sure you have a decent wisdom, otherwise, and you should, you're a monk. Now it's not a lot of damage, and you're only ever going to get uh, one use of this per turn, because you can only have one reaction per turn. And it's a 17th level feature. What I, when I look at this and I was thinking, you know, it's good. It's pretty, it's pretty impressive. It certainly it is, it's going to do the job nicely and there's nothing wrong with it as a feature. But I don't understand why some of the earlier options are just seem a little bit stronger than this. Certainly I feel like Searing Sunburst, where you get to do your Monk Fireball, would have been, would have been at 17th level rather than 11th level. And then the Sun Shield would have been at 11th level. But it's not that way. So don't complain about it, Fred. Essentially, go with it. That's really all I wanted to talk about. What do I think of the, uh, the Sun Soul Monk? I really think it's cool. It's a really functional monk. I would imagine that I will see the Sun Soul Monk at my table at some point. I certainly would like to play it myself. I really love the... Uh, the archetype. I think the Sun Soul Monk is pretty awesome. So if you found this video helpful or informative, please share and like the video. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel and you like this sort of content, please consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, hit the bell button to be notified when I go live and when I publish new videos. If you want to support my channel, you supported my channel by watching this video right now and I do appreciate it. Thank you very much. I have more videos you can watch and that certainly helps me out because I get a bit of AdSense revenue from it. I don't do Patreon but down in the description you'll find affiliate links to the Book Depository and Amazon where you can buy stuff online. I get a small commission, you pay exactly the same price, just go through that link. You don't have to buy the thing I've linked to, just go through the link and buy what you want. 
okay it works just like that now this is where you need to start typing frantically in the chat box if you have anything any feedback if you've used the sun soul monk before um, what did you think of it um, is there something that you think needs to change or um, are you happy with the way it is as it is right now let me know what you think or just say hi otherwise if you're not part of the live stream down in the comments that's where you need to be put down your comments there and I will respond to you as soon as I get a chance and hey till next time keep rolling those 20s Okay, I'm not gone, so don't run away if you're there. How's it going, Darren? Let me just um, pull up my face because uh, I'm sure at some point you would like to see more than just... I'm just making sure that the camera is pointing roughly at my head. Yeah, okay. I'm just line it up. It's click myself over and then I'll turn and face the camera so you can see my face. So... So what did you think? Hi Darren, how's it going? Very late here, might have to catch the rest of the video after the stream. Not a problem, I totally understand. Um, quite enjoy the monk videos, or oh, good, because I'm enjoying doing them. What's this, Rock, Mun Rock Mano? Rock Mano, hopefully I got it right. Well, as it happens, I had lots of technical difficulties, Rock Mano, and I was a little bit worried I wouldn't get this video out today as a live stream. Um, but it worked out, which is good news. Excellent. Good news. Uh, do you always start your players at level one? No. No, I don't. Um, but often I will, uh, just because I like to sort of start them at the very bottom and work them up. And because a lot of the DMing that I've done over the years has been with new players, many new players, it's always better to start them low so they get used to playing at low level rather than at high level where there's more complexity involved. So yeah, I've, I've started people off at first level, second level, third level, fifth level. Um, I've even started people at tenth level. Uh, don't really recommend that one, but I have. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Hopefully it does. Just need a drink of water. Oh, pardon me. All right, the room is quite quiet today. So um, I'm going to just say right now that as it happens, I don't know whether you've noticed, there should be a significant difference in the quality of the live stream. And the reason being is I now have better internet. <laughs> um, and I'm going to be doing a video on that tomorrow to test it out because I'm going to crank up the facility on my camera and see if I can't rock out with 4K live streaming. Because <laughs> apparently I have fiber and it should be working fine. So I've been told to give it all it's got and see what it can take. So you should hopefully look forward to an improvement in the quality of video and if that works out then my brother my middle brother is promised to come and sort out my sound issues in my office so you don't get the the echoing going on and if that happens things are really going to start to kick up um, so yeah that's that's what's going on for tomorrow and since there are no more questions and no, nothing else going on in the, the chat I'm going to say goodbye and I will catch up with you guys hopefully tomorrow provided everything goes well and thank you for showing up everybody who did